Hey guys, Patrick Reese here for a YouTube tutorial on that time lapse that you just saw. So if you want to know how I did that time lapse, uh, keep watching the video. I woke up one morning and I saw, I noticed the clouds looking really a little bit pink. So I'm like, oh, this could be a really awesome looking sunrise. So I've got my camera out, which is a Sony A7 Mark III and my 16-35 f4 lens, which is a great camera and uh, landscape lens combo. Um, went out to this creek that just near my house and um, chucked the camera on the tripod and uh, let the uh, camera run automatically with the inbuilt uh, time-lapse mode that's inbuilt in the uh, camera. So I posted this time-lapse video in the uh, Reddit forum in the Sony Alpha section and it got a really uh, high upvotes, I think about 340. I don't know if that's high, but that's high for me. But um, a lot of people were interested in how I did it, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to do a YouTube video on it. And um, also, uh, an Australian media outlet, news outlet, ABC Melbourne shared it on their Facebook page. So thanks a lot, ABC Melbourne, really appreciate that. Anyway, let's get to the tutorial. So I'll just quickly go over settings guys, normally I have my uh, setting on man full manual mode um, when I shoot landscape photography, but in this case you want to put in aperture priority. Um, what this does is it um, changes the shutter speed according to the light change and because it's a time lapse um, and the sun's coming up or going down, the light will dramatically change. So that's the A symbol for the A7 III, could be different on um, other cameras. Um, also, what I like to do, and this is just an optional thing, is I like to set my um, my ISO to the highest ISO I can without getting much noise. Uh, the reason for that is because when I was experimenting, when I was first doing this, I set it at 100 um, ISO, but then what that did is um, it increased the shutter speed to its maximum length, which is 30 seconds. And then I got a, like a really long exposure effect at the start of the time lapse, and then as the sun come up, I got a, um, a faster shutter speed, and it turned into like a normal sharper time lapse. So it, it, it was like a long exposure transitioning to a, sh a normal exposure, which looked a bit weird. But that's that's optional, and um, of course in aperture priority, priority you have to set your um, aperture. Um, for this lens, I reckon it's sharpest is between f f8 and f11, um, but because it, you're going to get a dark scene, which is a, a sunrise at the beginning or at the end of a sunset, you want to probably open it up as much as you can. So f8 would probably be the be the sweet spot for this. Now for the post processing, um, we're going to use LR time lapse and Lightroom and Premiere Pro. So the LR time lapse um, is a uh, program that does all the hard work for you. So it, um, the way it works is you choose uh, keyframes and the software automatically determines and figures out what it needs to um, edit those photos in between those two keyframes to create a nice seamless uh, smooth transition. So it's perfect for sunrise and sunsets where the light's changing. So you can get it for free but it only allows you to do a maximum of 400 images. After that, you've got to pay. Okay, so once you've installed LR Time Lapse, uh, open it up and navigate to your folder where you've copied all your raw files. And uh, so once you've clicked on that, you'll see all the raw files listed down here. And just click on keyframes and mine's already remembered the last keyframes when I did the time lapse from before. But for sunrise, usually three to four keyframes is enough. If you've got more, a lot of light change, you might have to choose more keyframes. So what, I'm going to choose four keyframes. So then the next step is you click save and then drag to Lightroom. So open up Lightroom, click the drag to Lightroom button, then drag that over to the library tab in Lightroom. So once that, that'll import, just wait for that to import. So once that's done uh, importing, you want to go to filters section down there uh, still in the library tab and click keyframes now these are all the these are the four keyframes that you've um, selected in LR time lapse so when once you want to once you've done that go to the develop tab and you want to edit these 
these images. So you don't want to do too much. I'll just quickly do um, a quick edit. So once you've edited your first image, what you want to do is hot with your first one selected, shift and right and shift and click the second image and you want to sync all those changes across and then edit the second one. So doing it this way will create like a nice smooth sunrise or sunset sunset transition. Alright, so once you've done that, you do repeat the same thing. Select the image that you were just editing, shift click and select this next image and sync. And then you edit the next one and so forth. So once you've done that and you're happy with your edits, go back to the library, select all of them, get a metadata and click save metadata to files. Now go back to our time lapse and reload. Now you'll see a lot more information there. Uh, click auto transition. Hit save. Now go back to LR. Uh, sorry, now go back to Adobe Lightroom. Turn off the filter so you see all the images. Filters off. Select all of them. Go to metadata again and click read metadata from files. Now what that will do now is it'll get all the data from Ally time lapse that it's figured out how to edit each one of those files, each one of those pictures to create that seamless transition uh, time lapse, and it'll edit all those files for you. Okay, so once that's done, select all of them again, export. And what you want to do is when you export them, um, do make sure you select a, um, a custom name, like you can select custom name, but make sure you have a sequence because you want to use a sequence when you're importing into Premiere Pro. So I'm just going to call it Sunrise. What the sequence will do in the export will it'll number each one individually one two three four etc. Um, this is what Premiere Pro will use when creating that time lapse. So depending how much how many images you've got, that might take a while to um, export, and depending how powerful your computer is, but um, yeah, we'll come back once it's finished exporting. While it's rendering, you have a cup of coffee. Okay, so once that's finished exporting, you can just close the Lightroom down and open Premiere Pro. Create a new project. I'm just gonna call it Sunrise Time Lapse. So you can Double click the uh, media browser to import or you can go to file and import and navigate to your JPEGs that you exported through Lightroom and now you only need to select the very first picture here and then you tick this box uh, image sequence that's what I was talking about when you exported it with Lightroom before to um, have a sequence have the sequence naming enabled so just click open and that will import all those uh, images as a sequence uh, into Premiere Pro. So you can just drag that over to the timeline. Um, you could do usually you do this before, but I uh, actually forgot to change sequence settings. So because my camera takes these images uh, with a 6,000 by 4,000 resolution, which is a 24 megapixel camera, um, that's not going to play natively. Um, on YouTube and, um, and normal players, so we can make this 4K. So the resolution for 4K is 38, 38, 
40 by 2160. Or you can make it just regular HD, which is 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to change that back to 4K, so 3840 by 2160. And just click OK because it'll ask you if you want to change that. And that's um, zoomed in, so you need to adjust that picture to fit the frame. So what you can do is right click your timeline file there and click set to frame size, there we go. Um, now you notice these black bars, that's because it's, the photos are, I think they're a four by three or three by two ratio, so you're gonna have to adjust that. So I'm just gonna expand that so the outside lines are right at the edge, and I might move that down a bit so it can, um, you can see the sky a little bit more. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. So you can play that back to just see what it looks like, but um, because it's a high resolution file, it will struggle to play that smoothly. So what you can do is you can either create a proxy or you can just render it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly render it. So I'll just create a new now point and uh, that's rendering now. Okay, so once that's rendered, just play that and have a look at it. I reckon that looks pretty good. So all that's left now to do is just export it. So you can do that by pressing Control M for Windows. Um, I think it might be Option M for Mac. Uh, or you can go File, Export, Media. Now, I'm gonna export this so it can be utilized for YouTube and social media. Uh, for that, you wanna pick uh, Format H.264 preset, you could probably pick the uh, 4K YouTube preset down the bottom, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit. So, uh, in under the video tab just here, just make sure that's set to 4K, so 3840 by 2160, and make sure your frame rate matches the source frame rate there, so that's 29.97, and yep, that's 29.972. Now, tick rendered max at max depth. Uh, you can leave that at high and 5.1, which is a good level for 4K. Keep going down. Now this is the important part. Um, choose CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, and we'll pick 100 bitrate. So what that, the reason why we choose that, we have a high bit, we choose a high bitrate is because when you upload it to YouTube, and Vimeo, and Facebook, they compress that even more. So if you choose like a lower bitrate. Uh, the social media platform that you're, you're uploading to will compress that even more and then your video will look pretty, pretty bad. So 100 is plenty for 4K. And lastly, just tick use maximum render quality. Oh, and before I forget, um, I always get in the habit of clicking, uh, clicking source range here and, and selecting entire sequence. There's been times where I've had an in and out point selected in my uh, timeline and I've just exported it and then it only renders, or oh, sorry, it only exports that little portion in the in and out point. Uh, make sure you know your location, where it is. Normally I think it picks the default, as a default it picks where your project file is saved, but it's always good to check. Mine's just C drive scratch disk and it's gonna be saved where the uh, JPEG files are. And it's going to be called Sunrise-1 and just click export. So I'll wait till that exports and we'll play it and see how it looks. So once that's finished exporting, just find your file and play it back. So there we go guys, that's pretty much it for the end of the tutorial. Uh, if you like this video and if you have found it helpful, please give me a like and uh, you might want to consider subscribing if you're into drone, GoPro and landscape photography, it will really help the channel out. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions, I'll uh, endeavour to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, that's it, see you next time guys.